Hello, everyone. Welcome. It is September 2nd. I am Topher Spinato of Topher Spin Meteorites, and we have another video hangout scheduled for today with actually a somewhat special guest uh, jumping in on us live from Brazil hunting meteorites. So today I kind of gave everyone the assignment, or last week I gave everyone the assignment to show off some ephemera, something either something related to meteorites, not meteorites themselves. So that was the assignment. We'll see how the, how the crowd did and uh, we'll check in on some show and tell. And then last week, unfortunately, you may have noticed there was no hangout posted on YouTube. Well, I am sorry. I made a mistake and I did not hit the record button. So there was nothing to post. So that's why we did the remotes from my friends, uh, Roberto and Raymond, uh, live from Brazil while they were hunting. So uh, Raymond, are you with us from Brazil? Raymond Borges. Staying with uh, uh, somebody who lives in, in the village here. Are you, can you? I'm having a there we go. bit of connection issues, so I'm trying to stop. Okay, uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm trying to stop some of the applications on my computer because I'm having a slow internet speed here so well I'll do a little quick Sorry. intro that for you okay. uh, Raymond Borges is one of my uh, personal friends we spent some time together at the meteorite mansion down in Tucson with some other people and uh, he is actually in Brazil right now in the small town of uh, Santa Filimomera <laughs> something like that but he's been hunting the mm -hmm. fall there for several days and then the name of your company is Space um, Rock. Let me see if I can share. I'm going to share my Hello, screen. Hello, Marissa. Here. Thanks for joining Possible. us. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Hey, guys. Hi, Marissa. Hey, Marissa. We have a VIP joining us today, Marissa Fanny. Stand on my computer. Okay. Okay. Uh, is it okay if I share my screen? I'm going to show you some of the images that I've captured with my drone. Okay. So you actually, he actually brought his DJI Mavic drone out there and captured some of the roofs and just the scenery around. In addition to getting okay. some gorgeous rocks. Share. Okay, here we go. Yeah. There we go. We're seeing oh, I'm gonna share that application. Fuzzy as heck. Let's see if it actually comes in. Hmm. This window away from the shared application. Oh, I, I think I see. Okay, can you see? Let's see. Screen sharing is paused. Okay. Okay. Let me share. Okay. Let's see. Okay. So, can you guys see the the current picture that I have on the screen? Yep. Oh, computer is just randomly locked out. One second. We're actually going to go back and revisit some of the topics and uh, show and tell that we did last week because they were uh, such good items. We just want to make sure that uh, YouTube doesn't miss out on them. Okay, there we go. Okay, so this is the town of Santa Filina. Um, in the front of uh, the bottom of the screen is the high mass area of the string field. So this would be the area that we would expect to find the larger stones. Towards the top of the picture is east of the town. So this shop is from west to east. Uh, it's about 200 feet, or two or 300 feet in the air from where I took this shot. And so you can see like the cemetery 
Um, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. Okay, Ooh, too much. Zoom out a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so the, oh, I zoomed out too much. The church there is the center square of the town. Um, and this town is built a long time ago. So the people, the design is very traditional where you, every little town has its own, uh, the big church right in the center. And then all of the political buildings, like the, the, the place where the mayor lives, the, the place where if there is a, a court in the town, it's all around that same square. The, the businesses are around that same square. And that's where the, the, one of the larger hammerstones fell was about 50 meters from the church, from that church that you see there in the right. And so today, today we were hunting, I was hunting with two ladies who live here and they're both meteorite finders. Um, and so they both found stones. They One found uh, 22 grams and the other one found a 20 gram. They were hunting in the same area. Nice. And I was out with them today. Okay. Let me see if I can show you where and I was. I'll just fill in the time. blanks there because you didn't give us your your weight that you found. I'll assume that uh, there was nothing to report. <laughs> I haven't found anything yet today. Um, we were hunting the area that was, uh, let me share this one. New share. Okay. Go to this image. Okay. So can you guys see this image? Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay. So this image is actually from east to west. Uh, so this image is, uh, is the same strewn field area, but instead of on the west side, this is on the east side. Mm -hmm. And so this area that I circled is kind of like a hot spot um, where probably the most coordinates I got were from around this area. And then if you see this little town, there's like this little community here uh, to the right of the image. There's like 30 houses there. That's where the house was that um, oh. hit by the 500 gram stone or six, 670 gram stone that broke the tile and went through his roof. And so there's a few buildings here. So this is a drone image. This is not um, the Google satellite or street view. This is, I took my drone uh, two or three days ago. So this is kind of how I've been using the drone is um, I, I use it not specifically to search for meteorites because that would have to be the much larger area of the stream field. For now, I've mostly been using it to scout the good sites. Um, you can see that there is an area there that not many trees or bushes are in. There's like two areas within that red circle that I made. So we hunted there for like four or five hours. Nothing. If we had found, if we would have found something, it would have been between 50, that maybe 40, 50 grams up to a few hundred grams. Because the, all of the size stones, well, there's only two that are larger than a kilo so far. Um, and they've been in the city and far west of the city. Wow. Do you have pictures of stones with you, right, or do you have stones with you right now? <clears throat> um, I picked up two new stones today, but they're actually not, I don't have them uh, with me. Um, I, right now they're in my uh, suitcase, but, um, my suitcase is in the owner of this house, her bedroom. So she kind of has the stones in her room. Gotcha. So I can't, I, by the time that we were going to do this meeting, she had already went to sleep. People go to sleep real early here. The sun sets around 5.30. Wow. Well, that, I, <clears throat> I was very wow. fortunate to have the uh, have a 50-gram one offered me today by, uh, by Raymond. <clears throat> Excuse me. And... Uh, I'm holding out for a little bit bigger, but I, I really don't want to lose my opportunity. Uh, so we're, we're definitely going to have to make sure while you're there that we, that we strike a deal because I'm, I really want 85 grams. <laughs> That's my goal. <laughs> so 
So I was offered an 81 gram today, but it would have been just below the full amount of money. Um, and I didn't buy it, I passed. And so there was uh, five people that offered me stones today that I saw in person. And I had to pass on three of the five because uh, the people who were here when they left, they told the residents that they would they were going to get money and they would be back very soon and they would just be paying the same or more uh, that they were paying while they were here. Sure I knew how much they were paying and it wasn't as much as they told me today. They were like, no, this person left and they told me they would be right back. They just want to get money and they're going to pay me this much. And I'm like, well, I've got the money on me right now. What do you want to do? And they're like, no, no, thank you. Wow. So. That's, that's got to be, that's got to be frustrating. Yep. Man. Well, we're really glad yeah, that I was able to oh. buy a tiny six gram piece. <laughs> yeah. I, I was trying to add that to my, uh, to my 50 gram one, but no, I keep on looking for you, man. We're, I appreciate it. And, uh, also got a little bit of the impact tile or, or the, 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 the roof part of the, uh, the roof that was damaged is coming my way as well. Mm. So I'm pretty pumped about that. Mm -hmm. Raymond, thank you so much. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to be putting a, a link, uh, in, in the, uh, in the description so people can contact you on Facebook to actually buy the stones that you're, uh, hunting and buying while you're there working with the locals to collect, and then also giving the coordinates to scientists so they can map it all out. So I'll make sure that I give you credit down below in the comments. People can reach out to you directly on Facebook and uh, make a purchase of this, this rare opportunity. So th thanks for checking in, buddy. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. All right. Does anyone have anything that they'd love to show or tell? I've got two things. <clears throat> Why am I not allowed? Oh, you got to turn your camera on. I just did. Awesome. Our other friend, Roberto oh. Vargas, just got back from Brazil. Yes, sir. Um, so the two things that I have today for show and tell are um, something that I showed last week, but it didn't get recorded. Yep. So that's a, that's a piece of the oh, hammer stone oh. with the tile. Dang. That is gorgeous, man. And I've so, been kind of I've been kind of like geeking over um, Brazil just because I recently went there, but this is actually the thing I've been most excited about kind of all month. Is that Indian? No. Indonesian. Indonesian? Oh my oh. god. Oh. That is massive. So that's uh, Satahi Nali. It's um, currently unclassified. Uh, this is a 33-gram oh piece. Good night. Sorry. 33-gram uh, piece of the Hammerstone. Oh, my God. Nice. Do we know if it's a CI or? Uh, I don't know. We'll wait and see. Hmm. Dr. Lawrence Garvey's working on it. Nice. Oh, that's gorgeous. Look at that crust. Yeah. Wow. And it's got dirt from where it uh, impacted the dirt because what happened was it fell through the roof on the outside of the house. So the overhang, the overhang, if you will, mm -hmm. and it punched a hole right through it and, and landed in mud. You can see in the video, you see him like digging at it with like a little backhoe type deal. Wow. What does it taste like? <laughs> oh, it tastes, it, it tastes a lot like Aguazarcas, actually. It just okay. it just crunches in your mouth. Yeah. 
super like easily. State. Wow, that is a yeah. massive yeah. hunk, dude. Massive yeah. hunk. Because yeah. I, I don't like naming prices because it's never going to be current when it goes out, you know, when you, people watch this. But let me just tell you, that, that's, a, that's a small car right there. <laughs> 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 it is it is it is nice and it's very exciting because i don't know i don't know how much material is actually going to be out there i yeah. know that there's there's a 2.8 kilogram stone or two no sorry two kilogram stone i'm i'm getting my falls mixed up there's a two kilogram stone that um oh, i think we might have lost his audio you lost my audio. There we go. It was a two kilogram All stone right. back. Yeah, there's a two kilogram stone that fell through the house, and then uh, I think that there were a couple pieces found in a rice field. But aside from that, um, you know, that's it, really. Wow. This so is this crazy. came from this came from the main mass uh, from that two kilogram stone that fell, and then uh, I'm not really sure where the where the rice field ones are, but Yep. Wow. That is so, absolutely so, amazing. Because like what we're talking about there is the uh, Indonesian uh, carbonaceous fall that happened. I don't even know what date that happened. It was, it was August, the last, 1st. August 1st. So 32 days ago. Um, we, we had uh, Raymond and Roberto both in Brazil in Santa Filomena. I think that's right. Uh, and they're chasing the, uh, they were chasing the 819 fall. So that's like two weeks ago. And then we have a bunch of friends in Morocco and Spain. We're from Spain in Morocco and Moroccans uh, in uh, Ur Achadib, Ur Achadib, Cheria? Arashida. Arashida, thank you, uh, in Morocco. And that one, that's the one that they think is, a, is they believe is a CI. I, I'm pretty sure. And, um, um, I think the. The things I've been hearing uh, and the uh, photos that I've seen, that one looks more CM2 like and has more of, a, of the white material mixed in. Uh, I, I think it's now <laughs> a lot going on this month, but yeah. I think it's the Indonesian one that they're suspecting might be a CI. Yeah, the the if you look at inside the Indonesian one, there's not. It doesn't look a lot like Aquasarcus inside. Yeah. It's very dark, very few like uh, white class, the, like the little white um, carbonaceous class that you'd see in there. I wouldn't call them CAIs. They're, they're kind of small, but um, yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's a great, great month for uh, hammer stones. Yeah, I can't believe it. you can go years and years without one. And then all of a sudden we're having, we're just getting nailed by them, which is awesome. I have, I have no complaints whatsoever. Yeah, and, and this is going to be, I, I have a uh, part of Park Forest that went through uh, the Garza house. I have some of that back there, but this is, this is going to be something that's really special to me, especially having the, the pictures and provenance and story to go with uh, the, the piece of tile or, or wood or whatever it is from Brazil, because uh, that, that just adds to the value extremely for me emotionally. Uh, and, you know, something that would just be in my collection and never go away. All right. Anyone have something they want to show? You know, I got one from last week. This is a uh, an oriented piece of 869. And yes. um, it... It's not a normal oriented shape, uh, you know, as in a, a shield or nose cone sort of shape, because it's it's very thick and very tall. But it absolutely is oriented. There's there's the backside. Definitely. And there's a bit of uh, rollover lip in a couple of spots. This this one uh, uh, obviously has got some fairly significant weathering. But it's got some some pretty uh, aligned uh, oh, regma glyphs. Oh, yeah. And what is that about? A, that's got to be at least five kilos. 
four, four um, kilos. I was, I was going to run down and, and weigh it. Um, I was going to say five. Scale, but anyway. <laughs> then you turned it over, and I remembered it's flat. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll weigh it before we're, we're done. Let's uh, everybody guess how many grams. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna. So, I'm gonna actually. I'm gonna do it in the chat right now. I say. Boom. My guess is in there. <laughs> okay. Whoever's closest else, wins it. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think it's that far, but. No. That's awesome. All right. Um. Because okay, so last week. Yeah, yeah, we're we're kind of redoing some things from last week because it wasn't recorded. So I want to show off something that I'm extremely happy about to have in my personal collection. This is a I gotta get this out of the way here. Uh, this is a rare palisite from Kansas, and I don't know why Kansas like has so many, well, a few palisites. It's got. Uh, Admire, Brenham, and Vermilion. So this is my piece of Vermilion. Uh, right here. So this is um, 20, just shy of 23 grams. It came from the main mass holder, which is uh, Marvin Kilgore through uh, Mark Wine collection. And the, I'm gonna try to remember what I hopefully learned last week. Mike Kelly reminded us that what we're seeing, and he's gonna hopefully chime in and correct me when I misspeak, but these, usually on a palisite, you're talking a nickel iron matrix and um, olivine. But these are not olivine. These are plagioclast crystals, which are usually seen in diagonite. Py I... Pyroxenes. They're pyroxenes. pyroxenes. Yeah. So this is a uh, kind of a rare one. And I am super happy. Super I happy. Snagged, I snagged a piece of that. Um... But because I live up here where it's humid all the time, um, I sent it out to have it restabilized. I had um, the KD meteorites do it. They, oh, they're they're the actually best. sending it back, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it just has a really, really cool pattern on it. And when I heard, well, I'm trying to collect all the palisites, obviously. So this is my, my newest one. And like I said, comes from our buddy Mark Wine, who lives right down the street from me. Um, well, I said right down the street, but that's globally. He lives about a half hour away. So there's my hunk of vermilion that I was very happy to get cut out of uh, the chunk that he had. All right. Who's got something? Let's work on that for next week then. Um, yeah. I have something that I'm adding to my collection. Um, if anyone wants to go next, just flag me down, just wave at me. I have something. Um, go for it. Go. What's that? Oh. I'm ready to share something. Oh, nice. You're next then. All right. Um, let's I see. Just, turn my camera around. I just around. got this, and I'm adding this to my collection. So this is uh, Norton County. It's an Albright, but the reason I got this one is it's crusted and i am super happy you know what give me three seconds i am not touching this one so here is my norton county with fusion crust Oh, yeah. You black like that one, Topher, like we were talking about in the other uh, Zoom? I just opened it up five minutes before the, the Hangout started, so I haven't had a chance. But the reason I picked this one is for the crust 
and it is going to play super nicely with this one in my collection currently. So one side is going to show with the number and the other one's going next to it with the crush sticking out. And then when you flip it over, you'll see the back of this one with the number of the other one. So. Did, um, did they both come with labels or I know some of the Nortons, like the high numbers, <clears throat> like the one I got ended up being from like a batch that was like two kilos or bought as fragments. So it didn't yeah. come with an individual. Okay, yeah. nice. Yeah, this came with an individual. Um, and then this other one here is from, uh, I think, I think we got this from Blaine Reed. Yeah, Blaine Reed in Tucson. Um, and he didn't give out a card. But what I'm really looking forward to, and you'll give me three seconds. We'll realize my dream together. It's so for um, the Norton this... display is complete. <clears throat> nice. So we have fusion crust with a number, and then a display. So that is my new personal collection, and I actually bought it from a friend of mine I haven't bought from in a way too long of a time, Sean Tatura. So thank you, Sean, for hooking me up on that one. Can you still hear me, guys? Yep. We're um, the Indonesian fall, I have two individuals that were shipped to me from that fall as well. I have the picture, but I, have, I haven't received them yet. <clears throat> if you guys want to see what they look like. Hopefully. Yes. Customs, I can share my screen. Let's see. Does everyone see Raymond right now? Okay. Yes. Yeah. So these are two individuals from the Indonesian fall. Um, I had a, a guy that I contacted through Facebook and he shipped them to me. He took photos and uh, of him putting them in the box and shipping them at the post office. And I've got the tracking number, but it hasn't updated for about a week now, which is typical because uh, uh, the Kenyan fall, I got two stones shipped to me and neither of them updated the tracking for almost a month. But then yesterday, I actually got the Hammerstone, a part of a three gram piece of the Hammerstone from Mary Wimburu's house in Kenya. Um, let me share that with you real quick here. So let me change this here. Uh, where's the letter from her? Okay. Screen sharing. Okay. Nice nails, Ivy. So this is a three gram piece from that hit the Mary Wumburu's house in Kenya. This was after uh, took most of the fall. It kind of happened the same thing here, where a little bit was left uh, with the owner, similar to Roberto getting the little, is it five gram piece, Roberto, from the the small hammer stone? Or, or yeah, the big five, okay. five, uh, five off of the one that hit Bam Bam's house, the 469 gram. And then uh, 33 so, from Indonesia. Nice, nice. Um, so I don't really know how much my stones are from Indonesia because they didn't have a scale. The guy didn't have a It's going to be like between 20 and 40 grams or something. Hopefully wow. more. I don't really know. Um, I don't know if I'm going to receive it either because he did not ship at DHL. This guy was a, a local citizen there and not, DHL was nine hours from him. Um, I know that Roberto got his, I'm pretty sure, DHL in the capital, uh, which is Jakarta. Um, but, so, let's see. We're talking about the, the, fr the freshest falls on earth. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, Christian? Yeah? 
you, you got your thing ready? Now? Yeah, I'm ready to go. So oh, nice. um, okay. yeah, this is something that's not meteorites, but it's ephemerally related to meteorites. <laughs> okay. So um, these are both stamp collection books that I inherited from my dad in 2006. And um, there's a lot of historical stuff here. So uh, he was born in the Czech Republic. And basically, you know, that country had a really long, interesting history related to communism and the Cold War. So um, some of these are related, some of them aren't, but uh, this is tied to meteorites in a way that I hope you guys will see shortly. So um, now my phone, it's like, I, can't, I don't think I could zoom out. So I kind of have to hold it like far away, slanted or close up. So bear with me. So this is one of the really nicer ones up here. Um, I don't know if you, could, if you guys can see it. Vostok 6. Sorry, what was that? Vostok 6. I'm not sure I understand. That's the mission. Uh, oh, oh, the okay. Name of the this, this right here? Wow. Yeah, oh, it's it, Vostok. Wow. It's five and six. six. Yeah, five and six. Oh, yeah, five and six, yes. Wow. Yeah, see, I, I had no idea what this was from, so it's good to know. Um, and I can't read that. I just understand Cosmo something related to Cosmo. And I believe that's uh, the leader from China. Um, from, yeah, that's correct. I think, uh, and obviously I think that is uh, the Kremlin. No, that's not the Kremlin. That's somewhere really, oh yeah, this is Hungary. 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 Yeah, I was just in Hungary in, uh, in uh, August last year. So that's cool. Definitely looks smaller on the postcard. Here's more space stuff. So Sputnik. Oh, yeah. yeah, see, this stuff's old. And uh, that's Cuba, too. So this is not, like, coming here unless you get it from another country. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, we definitely weren't putting out stamps about Sputnik. <laughs> right. Go to Russia. And Cuba up here also. I wish there was more information about these for the general public. Um, and then it looks like might be a, a space station, one of the early space stations, but it doesn't look like the one that uh, connected to the American space station, which That's was probably a cooperative near, effort. Probably near. Yeah. I, I love these, like this, the theme and, and the style of all that. This one also is uh, industry, you know, those ideas, mountainscapes, these are from I can't, I can't exactly tell, but yeah, there are script symbols on the bottom, but and then some aviation. Or Cuba. Uh, Republic Togolese. I don't know where that is. Not sure if that country still exists. Cuba, more space. Oh, there's some interesting stuff here too. Rwanda, Panama, Mongolia. These are pretty interesting. They need to be in like individual sleeves. I'm surprised they're not stuck to each other. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised too. Yeah, I mean, anywhere else, I mean, I would imagine they'd be all stuck to each other. Yeah, this must have been a book made specifically for stamps. Um, 
colors are amazing. There's no fading. Yeah. There's also currency that he collected that I have, um, but I don't think that was related to space as much. There was money from Iraq, Saddam Hussein, and also um, money with uh, money from Iran. So many different countries. Here's some more space. Vietnam, that's an, that's an unusual country when you think about space programs. Yeah, definitely. Um, wasn't aware. More space. That is from, where is that? That's Vostok 3 and 4. Yeah, that looks like CZ. Is that? Czechoslovakia. Yeah, I'm not sure. And then there's Sputnik 1. Yeah, I, that looks like LZE. So um, if it was Czech Republic, um, it would just be C. CK most likely um, because my dad was checking that would be the the crown the denomination of money most likely that a stamp would cost um, and then Romana so Rome I believe yeah, we'll say Italy. Romania R Romania yeah. Romania sorry Romania thank you and Lenin 1957 wow. <laughs> So we're almost done. This is the, is this the second book? Yep. Yes, I think so. This is the second book. Um, that's a nice one. You like that one? I guess mushrooms are a very communist thing. <laughs> I was going to say, there's a lot of mushrooms, man. That's nice too. This, wow. I'm not sure I've seen that one too much. Um, these are really nice also. Now, if someone knows a lot more about stamps and I'm doing this the wrong way, please speak to me after this. I, I want to make sure I'm not need a doing a list. <laughs> yes. Bulgaria. That's, these are really cool. I, I like these yeah. a lot. So, um, and then, yeah, I'm sure, I think that's about it. And I, I noticed this one was in the other book too. So, let's do those. That's and I think that's cool. it. That's yeah, cool. I think I think that was it. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. That's nice. I have. I, I got um, one. Oh, who's that? Uh, I was gonna say go for it here. Just taking on stamps. Okay. Go for it. So, a couple three things here. We're talking about space. How was that? Heat shield plug? This is a heat shield plug. Wow. This is from the Apollo program. And uh, I wasn't aware, but they act, I found a website with a huge amount of information. They actually did quite a bit of development of the heat shield to uh, minimize weight and maximize its thermal efficiency and figure out how much thermal protection they needed. Uh, so tracing back, looking at the materials and the type of construction, uh, even though I have no documentation, I believe this to be an Apollo 8 heat shield plug. Hmm. Uh, Apollo 8 was, uh, was supposed to be a uh, Earth orbit mission, but uh, the CIA had some information that the Russians were launching something towards the moon. Um, we didn't know manned or unmanned. Turned out they, they launched an unmanned uh, probe uh, at roughly the same time. So uh, Apollo 8's um, flight was changed very close to the blast off time to go out and around the moon. It'd be the first ones to go out and around the moon. So this and I don't have proof, but, but I believe from the construction, um, is from Apollo 8. That's the first time a spacecraft left uh, Earth orbit, and it uh, experienced a much higher re-entry speed, about 25 and a half thousand miles an hour. And um, a lot of people don't know, but the, the, the re-entry from the moon was... Uh, it came in into the atmosphere for a little while and then intentionally skipped back out, let everything cool off for a little bit, 
and then came back into the atmosphere again. How did you get something like so, that? Uh, I didn't was, know that. Uh, I uh, I talked to, talked with somebody on uh, on Facebook, and uh, it was put on. Actually, no, it wasn't Facebook. It was uh, one of the anyhow. Uh, I think it was one of the Usenet uh, forums. But anyhow, he had inherited a few of these, and uh, he put it up on Facebook or on eBay, and I bought it within minutes of him buying wow. it up. Oh, nice. And. I have how, absolutely. How did he get zero. it? He inherited it from his father, who worked on the Apollo program. Wow, that is amazing. If, yeah, I was going to say, well, where's music. the connection? How do you know what it is? He's yeah, like, well, it, it's a very unique construction, and I just had it there where you see it's a it's a series of hexagons mm -hmm. uh, made up fiberglass actually you can see it better on the back a series of hexagons yep uh, and then they actually filled each of those hexagonal uh cavities with the ablative material and uh the t the type of ablative material that they use changed through the program as they developed um, the space shield or the heat shield and the heat shield amounted to quite a bit of the mass. And you can see some of the lines here on this side are those, the edges of those honeycomb mm -hmm. fiberglass. The mass of the space sheet of the heat shield was actually fairly high. And um, everything that you put in lunar orbit is super expensive. Uh, and so they, they wanted to work hard to minimize weight. Uh, and so they, you know, they did things like the, the lunar excursion module, the walls were aluminum and they were thin enough that you could take a ballpoint pen and poke a hole in the side of the spacecraft. So there's, there's, there's something from space and here's some ephemera. Anybody know what book this is? Is that rock from space in Japanese? Exactly what it is. <laughs> That's uh, Robert Norton. Uh, yes, and I bought it. I bought it directly. Bought it directly from Dorothy in the United States. Our books, um, you, know, you hold them this way with the binding on this side, and then they open like this. But in Japan, the binding is on the right side, and you open. Like wow. this, and they read wow. uh, top to bottom. But uh, that's weird. Dang. And this, this is a book that's actually pretty stunningly rare. This is OPIC's uh, Physics of Meteorite Flight in uh, the Atmosphere, published in. 1958. Uh, this this particular copy is X Library. And it has a Library of Congress uh, duplicate stamp and a Langley Research Center uh, stamp. That's cool. And even though it's super rare, cool. I have two copies. <laughs> That's my pat. <laughs> and then this one also has a uh, uh, library copy, NASA Wall Wallop Station, Wallop Island, Virginia. And fortunately, it's not signed, but this is Principle to Meteorites, uh, Meteoritics by Krenov, translated into en English and pretty early, 1960. And one last piece of meteorite ephemera. This is a NASA technical publication. Oh man, I uh, like this already. F111 on uh, Moldavites from Bohemia and Mor Moravia. Huh. And it is, it costs all of $5.95. 
on one of my oh. trips to Boston. Um, you know, the, the stamp is really, really vague, but it's uh, it's from one of the NASA research centers as well. They had uh, they clean they uh, consolidated uh, libraries and uh, generated a lot of uh, excess stuff. Wow. Uh, and even though this is supposed to be ephemera day. I got I got this in the mail. So this is uh, a 756 gram. Uh, it's unclassified, but from looking at it under the microscope, it is uh, super likely to be a CD3, and it's got a bizarre round thing in it here. There you can see it. It's about mm -hmm. uh, 18 or so millimeters across. And it is probably a, a, a type 2 uh, CAI, um, but I can't rule out chondral yet. But, uh, this, this one is from Matt Stream. And uh, it uh, has an amazing amount of primary crust for a CV3. And some, it, it's, I, I think it's oriented, but I haven't studied it quite enough yet, but, but obviously there's some frame glyphs that are aligned there. And so when um, I, I intend on, if I can find a spot to cut a type sample off without uh, making it too ugly, uh, I intend to, uh, to ask Daniel to uh, uh, classify it for me. And uh, if, if it were in the Met Bowl now, it would be the 47th largest uh, CV3. That's so cool. Wow, congrats, man. We hope. Here's another uh, interesting round yeah, well, thing there. Huh. Probably a CAI, but we can't rule out chondral. So, and it's, it's moderately attracted uh, with a magnet or to a magnet. Oh, it's got high magnetism actually, or higher than I expected at least. Yeah, it, it's about the attract, it's kind of top end of LL, but more, but closer to L mm -hmm. for, for magnetic attraction. So that's my goodies for today. Nice. I got a quick something here if you want to yeah. see uh, something I found. I gotta find uh, you. There you are. This is Ron. Yeah. So, Thanks I was for sharing that with us. I was in Tucson a couple of years ago. Now, now, I was looking for something ephemeral, and I, I stumbled across in the main ballroom. Um, I don't know if you guys know Lauren Feldman, who makes custom knives. So, he had a, he had a collection of meteorite knives, you know, knives of meteorite iron. And he had this sign on there, this little plate, which I kind of fell in love with. It's, he had it called the Supernova Collection. Oh, nice. It depicts a, an asteroid passing, I guess, Saturn. And I just, I had to have it. Mm -hmm. So we talked a little bit, agreed to sell it to me, so we really took notice of it. It's a stainless steel billet, and weighs about two pounds, things really heavy. So I, that was my first piece of meteorite ephemera, actually, that I stumbled that across. That is cool. So one of a kind. I like that. that Did he like, hand etch that? Yes, all hand etched. He, he designed it to be etching himself. Uh, he purchased the billet, but uh, the back is blank. There's nothing on the back. Mm -hmm. But he actually drew, if you can see right in here, you can actually see where he actually has uh, like sections on the, the actual face of the, the planet. You can see uh, 
Yeah, you can see striations. In yeah, it. the dark and the light right there. I yeah. thought that was cool as hell. Yeah. And I just, I just, you know, so he, he sold it to me. And I actually saw him this last past February. And uh, mm -hmm. he said he was kind of sorry he sold it. But then also, <laughs> I have which one more thing here. I was in, uh, you know, I live in California, so I was on the Central Coast. Uh, a little town called Cambria, which is kind of a touristy beach town. Uh, very calm and a lot of, a lot of gift shops. So I walked into an art gallery and I saw these signs there that this guy makes using old um, license plates. He spells out things he wants. So I had him make me a little sign that says meteorites. Oh, <laughs> nice. <really cool. laughs> cool. I would so, put that on my car and see if I can get away with that, it. That's, that, that was, a, that was hey. I, it was just a brainstorm. Look, then, look uh, at the O. Look at the O. Arizona, baby. Arizona yeah, the, in the house. Yeah, Arizona's there, New Mexico's there, California's there, uh, all kinds of things. And it just, he does this, I think he's either in Arizona or New Mexico, I forget where. That's but cool. But it's another one of a kind. And my wife was on a trip with a girlfriend, same area, and she bought me this. It's a repop. Remember wow, Harbin nice. Institute's Museum? In yeah. New York City? This is a, a repop. This is not original, of course. Yeah. So it's probably taken off. And then, so being the creative guy that I am, so I know you know this. Yeah, we're, we're <laughs> the ripples okay. of the internet. <laughs> yes, <laughs> this, this is a big one. I have to hold this so far. So I made this myself. Oh, <laughs> and nice. I, and I hung it up over, I'm over my cabinet. These are just a little piece of wood with a bunch of metal letters on there. So that, that I just had to do something just to make nice. this. So this is my, my, my attempt at making meteorite sign. It was all hand done. I did everything except the letters I just bought. Yeah. So anyway, that's, that's awesome. what I wanted to show today. I don't know if you're going to get into the frame or not, but uh, yeah. Well, we we can let's let because it's it's about ephemera. So yeah, yeah that's, let, that's fine. I'll, I'll go into the story a tiny bit. <clears throat> okay. Um, I'll where be we have uh, these back. We have the night. I don't even know how to start the story. <laughs> the frame? No, uh, honestly, in the beginning, there was light. And light shone through a meteorite, and it was gorgeous. And men reproduced it. That's all you need to know. From the, from the age of cavemen, shadows, and fire, stained glass to, to high uh, efficiency LED lighting, it's the same principle. You shine light through something gorgeous and you get gorgeousness out of it. So we're, uh, we're very lucky that Ron last week showed off his um, backlit frames that he built for his Admire. And then he so kindly bought a uh, Semchen slice off of it. Nice piece of Semchen. Yeah, it was gorgeous. Yeah. And he built the frames for them, backlit them. And then uh, we kind of were talking after one of the hangouts like, hey, how can we... I'm always open for ideas to add to the the whole experience for everyone. And we got to talking and, and he says, hey, look, I'm going to build another one of these. How about I shoot a how-to video? I'm like, are you kidding me? Yeah. So Ron, <laughs> when he built his one for, for the Semchen, actually shot a how-to video, a 10-minute to 11-minute video of how to do it. I'm actually giving that video because th the idea is – with this video and about a hundred dollars of tools and some of your creative time you can produce your own backlit frame and you don't necessarily have to spend hundreds unless you're into spending hundreds of dollars on art if that's your thing do it um, i've spent a lot of money on art um, but this the idea is anyone with a little bit of tools a little bit of time and a little bit of money can do this. So what I did is I got the video that Ron made and I sent it to my boy Travis Howard and he is going to use those instructions to replicate and build three frames for me. He's going to find all the little snags, all his minor little tweaks or improvements and when done there's going to be a final video that's put out and it's anyone who wants to build a backlit frame. Here's a tried and true method. Um, Ron started it. And do you have the admire and the, the frames near you? Yeah, yeah, right here. All right. 
In fact, they're all lit up right now. And I, I had one more touch, by the way. I, I put a little, I bought a switch on Amazon. You can see that right there. It's an on-off switch. It's a little, I don't know if you can see. Oh, there it is right there. A little on-off. Here, let me turn this over here. That's the admire. Trying not to get too much glare. But if I flip, flip the switch, it's just a nice on-off switch. Yes. So that's the admire. Okay. And I built this um, about a year and a half ago. And the, uh, the uh, let's see, the Semchon is right here. I'm extricate it from the wall. Okay, same kind of idea. Got the same switch on it. Turns off, turns on. Except I didn't use glass on there, so I don't get the glare. That's the only difference. Yeah. Other than that, it's the exact same process. I was I was just about to ask you if the other one was more environmentally sealed uh, or yeah, if it was just really, decorative. Yeah, yeah, I put glass on there because uh, the kind of frame I bought, um, the, the glass was actually glued into the frame. Mm -hmm. you know, it, was a, it was kind of an art piece. I just took, the, you know, the, there's two pieces of glass, the back and the front. The back one had a decal on it, which my wife liked, and we got tired of it. So I, I scraped up with a with a safety razor, hmm. and so but it was it was trapped in there. I couldn't get it out without breaking yeah. it. This one didn't have that, so this one I was able to remove everything, as I showed in the video. I took it down yeah. to the bare frame. And but, we're, uh, in the video, the it also details the hardware that he's using. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> now yeah, you don't need any power tools. Everything's all most sophisticated. The thing you need is a glue gun. Yeah, <laughs> gun. Nice. So, other than that, it's uh, you know just parts from Michael's art supplies and Home Depot and you know just regular old parts. Nothing special. That's so awesome. you got a really nice frame out of the deal. Pretty amazing. So yeah, it does. I mean, I'm going to try my hand at making something like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, try and buy all the stuff and um, see what I can do to make my. <laughs> to make my own, I apologize. That's my that bird. Because, yeah, <laughs> um, well, if I could for a moment, I could show one of my new additions that ties in with this. I'm so excited that I could get this. It's uh, my Diogenite. Oh my gosh. My NWA 7831. Mm -hmm. It's in 8.8 .8 grams rice. And that's good surface area for I eight know. grams. That's eight good. grams, they cut that thing thin. It's very nice. Yeah, they, they cut it pretty thin. And uh, if I can turn my flashlight on, this will be stunning. There we go. Oh my. Oh, wow. Nice. That's Beautiful. That's nice. Gorgeous. Yeah. Cool. I mean that that's just that's stunning. Wow. That's a diogenite? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Oh my god. Very nice. And it's it's hard to get pieces like that because even in the net bowl they have a note that says a lot of the pieces fragmented as they were taken out of the ground. Wow. Wow. So yeah, I was super happy to finally get one of those because uh, I don't see them too often and oh. I don't see big slices too often. So I knew it was going to be rare and when when the opportunity arised I, and I had the money, I said, you know what, I got to get it. This is my goal. There you go. Hey, yeah. Marissa, um, if you're looking for an easy way to backlight display it and you're not, you know, going crazy on it, although definitely... Uh, you know, and you want something that's handleable, these are uh, plexiglass flames, frames that are like a dollar for the thin slices, and they fit in there perfectly, and then you can hold them up, and you all get uh, get good views through them. Nice. Because I know I won't have to worry about much moisture control since there's, yeah, there's some iron in it, but not much. Mm. So yeah. I don't have to worry about sealing it up. Yeah. Wow. That's that nice. I I love the Agonite. <clears throat> yeah, 
Um, so I, one, one, one last thing on the lit frames, if I, if I may. Um, Topher's going to get in a whole bunch of trouble if he doesn't admit that this was uh, Ann Black's oh, idea. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, we're having a whole conversation on that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> um, well, I I originally saw in Tucson um, Ann Black uh, Empatica up in Denver, uh, Colorado, had an escal <clears throat> uh, from Argentina. It was it's it is like what we showed you is high quality do it your health do it do it yourself stuff what she did is she went out the artistic way and you know they spent hundreds of hours look at hundreds of frames so that just shows you how you know the, the upper echelon quality and price tag that was associated with that type of thing so uh that might that was the definite inspiration for this That's um nice. but i don't own one yet i don't own anything um, backlit. I'll, I'll show you how I'm backlighting things right now. Let me see here. Uh, okay. So here's how I backlight things. Like this is my diagonite right there. Mm -hmm. So I, I basically just have lights standing up in here. Oh, that works. Nice. So you have to get down to a certain level to see the different ones, but. So, Topher, you ever think about just getting a light box and just playing them flat? I know light boxes are great for doing things. I know. Like, uh, I, this is my newest one that yep. I added right here. I just did a cost a search on light boxes on eBay. They're running like $14. They're cheap. Yeah, no, they're not expensive. And if you're willing to yeah. either, you know, kind of put them at a little bit of an angle and you could put yeah. magnets on a couple spots in the back yeah. of it if you have pieces that are, yeah. uh, you um, know, palisadic and magnetic, obviously the diagonites would be a little harder. Yeah, I'm not you quite sure how, how I'm going to finish. Get them to, get them to grab. I'm not, not quite sure how I'm going to finish with my display, but like nothing's concrete in there because everything moves. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden, Earth check comes out, and I need to move and make room for that. You know what I mean? So it's like I'm not I'm not doing anything that I <laughs> that I don't have to that I can't undo in there very easily. Um, I, I do want, in a very selfish way, want to show off something, but I would like to show Pat first because it looks like he has something cool. Yeah, there you go. It's a lot too light. So. Oh, sorry. I'm, okay, now I'm on muted. Uh, so this this is one of the the lights off of uh, uh, Amazon, and mm -hmm. these are called tracing lights. Um, and they're not all created equal. Um, many of this, hard to see here because the intensity is so high. I can see okay. This one has, well, the, the, the lit surface is not, um, is not uh, uniformly lit. It has a, a background of dots. These things are uh, sold as tracing lights. Hmm. Um, but uh, I had to, uh, buy a few of them to find uh, one that was evenly lit. Uh, and uh, this is what Marissa's uh, thin section viewer uh, lighting uh, is made from. I just put a piece of polarized wow. film over it. So, um, uh, can that I be, can, go can, you, can you take a Dremel? To, I, I take it that that's clear on the inside and it's just lit. So, you, yes, could, yeah. you could potentially take a Dremel tool and cut that to whatever size you want or shape you want. Yeah. Now, the, the LEDs uh, in these are all uh, down one side. This technology uh, is uh, the same technology that's used for backlighting liquid crystal TVs, laptop displays, all the edge. It's all the edge. Uh, ed edge lighting, and then uh, they figure out how to propagate that light out oh, into a okay. flat surface. Um, so, so yeah, so the electronics end right here and all of the rest of this is just plastic. So you could cut that to whatever shape, but the lights are coming from, from this side. Mm -hmm. Use that in a frame. So you'd have. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I would, I would like to have, something like that that I could um, you know put my piece on and then cut up behind it and just have that as part of the display as part of the stand 
yeah. you know, so I don't have to worry about my diagenite falling over, my stem chin crashing, or something like that. Yeah, you, you could very easily, um, if you have a, I think there's a tech plastic in, in, uh, uh, in the Phoenix area, you could get some black um, uh, polycarbonate and cut out the shape of your meteorite, leave this as is behind it, put that black polycarbonate on, and if you pick the right thickness, you could actually have the meteorite slice you know, sort of sitting in the in the polycarbonate. That that's good for for any. I I understand and appreciate that, but that's for people who have real estate. I'm in a I'm in New York City. My my cabinet is New York City. Everyone's bunched on top of each other, so I can't have a, a six uh, six inch wide display. <laughs> you just need five bigger meteorites, Dr. Dober. No. Oh. Jeez, uh, uh, I would like to show something off that uh, is related to today's topic. It's ephemera, and my wife made this for me. So, I mean, I can't can't get any better than that. I I won't necessarily go through every page and show you everything in it, but I'm a collector and I collect things from around the world, meteorites, and. Part, oh yeah, there's stickers, there's stickers, but I collect the labels from all my international shipments. So what we have here is, um, let me see here, that's some, uh, those are some thin sections from Germany. Um, these are all Germany here, as you can tell by the, the cuckoo clock and the Bavarian castle and Deutschland down here. So I have my own scrapbook of different items. Um, this is another one. This is um, from, from Avo, um, Ricardo, when I bought a, uh, a um, Muniana Lusta that he found. He sent me a box, a bunch of German candies too. So those go in there. Um, yeah, this is from my buddy Alex Volta in Germany. Then the Merkel Girl in Germany, one of our buddies that we all know. Uh, Jans Bauer, Bauer, he does uh, impact tights. Some more Germany, but I mean, look, look at the time that she went into this. There's more Germany. This is saved for because I have more Germany on the way. These are all my Poland. So this is uh, Matthias. I was very happy to uh, write a recommendation letter for the IMCA for Matthias. It only cost me meat. No, I'm sure. um, Alan Mazur, serious collector dealer from Poland. Got shooting stars and planets and stuff. But yeah, got Italy in here. Whoops. Lots of France. Lots and lots of France. Um, Pierre. And uh, also uh, Peach. Pat Patrice. And Morocco, well, Morocco, but through France. So that's my book that she, my wife's making me, which I thought was pretty cool. Right. All right. Does anyone have something they'd like to show? I do, Tober. So speaking of ephemera, So I was lucky enough to get up to Barnstable two weekends ago to go hunting and successfully find my first little fragments of a meteorite ever. So I came back with nine grams there and then got to knock oh, back oh. at Barnstable Brewing a couple beers with Stephen J. Mara. So mm -hmm. this is my little bit of a femur from there. But what I was looking at doing was taking that and I got a piece of barn wood as the the base plate for it. I'm gonna 
incorporate the bottom of the can into the base plate along with a couple photos from uh, out there hunting. And that's where I'm going to go ahead and place all my little fragments in there against the magnet. So it'll be an open, open little uh, dish to hold it in there. That's cool. And that is amazing because that's that's Barnstable, Barnstable uh, from our yeah. friend uh, Stephen Amara, um, the the second largest or the largest Massachusetts find ever. I forget, but it's it's definitely up there. So yeah, it's the gift that keeps on giving. Every time he we has a, he has a buddy over, they go and and rehunt and rehunt and get smaller and smaller fragments. But man. I would love to pull one of those out of the ground myself. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, oh. Going with stamps. Oh. That's, the, uh, that's the first stamp that I've, uh, I've picked up. So that's a Murchison hmm. anniversary stamp there. I'll get back a little bit so it focuses. Very and cool. uh, nice. it, in the little uh, meteor, uh, my little bit of meteorite is actually in there. I don't have much of it. I got to upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> it's sitting there on top of the stamp. You added that yourself? Yeah. That's awesome. I that's love great. it. That's, that's great. That's great. Good for you. Yeah. Put a patent on it. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if you saw in the post, um, if everyone hasn't seen the, uh, the space window at the uh, National Cathedral, um, it's got a piece of lunar in it. Uh, and it's like a crazy looking stained glass, you know, it's not your traditional uh, uh, church glass type, you know, it's, it's, it was inspired by shots brought back from, uh, from the astronauts and it was made by a guy in St. Louis and installed there with the actual piece of the moon in it. Um, so you're talking about, uh, you know, light and stained glass and, uh, and meteorites, you know, yeah. that's all of it all tied together. If you Wait, haven't where, seen that. Where is that, that again? Uh, it's National Cathedral. Uh, I put a link to the uh, an article describing what it is in the uh, the chat. Nice, nice. Hey, while we're talking about the chat, is there any update on the um, the weight of the eight sixty nine, or or we're gonna do that at, I am, after? I, I'm ready to do it uh, whenever uh, whenever you want. All right, you are spotlighted. We have. Okay. Okay, we have everybody gets one last. So, so this is an 869 oriented, but a real thick nose cone sort of shape. And there's a scale cube. So the weight. Some of the, some of the guesses by. are 3750, 3000, 3000, 4200. 2,500, 3,500, 8,000. <laughs> yeah. And the mass is 36.25. 36.9. I think. Yeah, I'm good. I, wait. <laughs> oh, wow. 3625. You were only off by 125 grams. Yeah. I was off by 125 grams. <laughs> we both sandwiched it. Wow. Good job, Marissa. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, congratulations. Yes, I did. I did a, uh, I had a rock show one time, and let me see if I can get it. Jeez. When we were allowed to go in public, do you remember that, guys? Holy crap, this is heavy. <laughs> Jesus. I don't remember being that heavy. But this is, if you remember in last week's video, uh, hello, Dr. Garvey said uh, he pulled out a, he opened the drawer and then had a sample of mine. That's where the sample came from, right there. So I had this, it's beautifully, uh, let me see here, beautiful regmaglyph. I don't know which way the light's better. But um, I brought this to one of my rock shows. And uh, I asked people to uh, guess the weight and they could win a meteorite. Not this one, but they won a meteorite. And this one couple, they held it and then they, they kept on doing something like this with their fingers on top of each other. And they, they literally went to the, to the fence and, and stood there for about 
10 minutes, not by the fence, by the wall, and just stood there with their fingers measuring things and coming back and touching this and checking out with <laughs> their arm and stuff. Then they guessed. Now, this is about eight kilos. They were off by five grams. Oh, my Whoa. God. I was like, how in the hell did you do that? You have no idea the density of a meteorite. How did they were off by 15 grams, 15 grams on a, on a 7.46 kilo or something like that. They were off by 15 grams. Super impressive. Did they explain how they did it? No. Oh, uh, I asked her about it and she said that <laughs> because I, I asked why she kept doing this. She just kept on, she had one of these motions would constantly do this while the husband was doing the finger, the finger measuring stuff. They figured it out based on their child, on how heavy their child was at what point in their life he was this big and that, and how, how hard he was to pick up. And I'm like, you guys are like devoted parents within 15 yeah. grams. <laughs> yeah. That's almost a little scary. Being yeah. that devoted to your kid. Like, no, like when will I ever get privacy? Yeah. Like what, they, they weighed the kid every day? <laughs> exactly, yeah, in exactly. grams. And yeah, the kid didn't have an eating complex at all. Oh, God. <laughs> hey, Topher, I, I have one more thing, real quick thing to show if you're interested. Yeah, go for it. Okay, well, it's not really unusual. A couple of year, years ago, I was looking for a um, model of Willamette. I got, you know, from Knock with Dog. Oh, wow. Oh, I have one of those. Yeah, I, I looked up, nice. I saw it in, in his, his store in, uh, in Tucson, and I thought, God, I gotta get me one of those. And I forgot who had them. So I had to do a search. I finally found it. I got this about oh, a couple weeks later. That just, is kind of way cool. cool. Yeah. So I, I you know what you need to do is get, get two little action figures. Like little yeah, two kids little kids. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I take that along on my, on my meteorite talks when I go to elementary schools. Then I show the real picture. And yeah. kids are just going, whoa. You know, yeah. the two little kids sitting in there. You know, the old 1900s picture. Yeah, that's uh, a kind of very the, iconic picture. Yeah, and, and very, very. I, it's hard to get a piece of that thing to begin with, but to have the entire meteorite, well done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's in Smithsonian, isn't it? No, it's in... Um, Museum of Natural History in New York. Oh, there you okay. go. Yeah. Bruce Feingold, everyone. Okay. <laughs> in New York. <laughs> yeah, I get to see it quite often. Oh, oh, man. Man. I'd love to see it one day. You have uh, 60 grams of that one. Uh, E.T. went back to the uh, hole where it was found, and of course, there's a bunch of shale there, but he went through and picked through stuff carefully. Found one that was a lot denser than the others, and uh, it uh, he ground a side off of it and it had metal in it. So wow. I had one of those for a while and traded it back to E.T. for an Allende. That's cool. Hmm. Nice. So I got an ephemera question for somebody. I am on the hunt for uh, Nininger ran his own printing press uh, back oh, at the yeah. uh, AML, mm -hmm. uh, American Museum, Museum, sorry. Um, I'm looking to find a piece of uh, the typeset that he used, which I know got sold off a while ago, so it's traded hands, I think, a couple times. Somebody had a piece of that last Someone had the G. Night. Someone uh, had a lowercase yeah, G. Some, yeah. Somebody had I, know, I know Cameron had a uh, dollar sign, because one of the things I'm interested in is the, I still yeah, dollar sign. I still do. Yeah, um, yeah I'm not forgetting who was doing those. I still uh, do uh, hand-printed labeling, so I'm looking for a, a, a piece of the typeset so I can actually do like a, a period or one of the symbols in my actual uh, numbers in order to uh, make them more unique versus just doing a letter in front of it with my... Um, I think Blaine Reed had, uh, had some of that stuff. Uh, shoot him an email. And if that fails, uh, send an email to ET. You'll know who has it. 
Okay, thanks. Yeah, because I think it'd be really cool to actually ink up and use a ninja yeah. piece from making the actual ninja books to uh, to roll the numbers. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Um, Hang on, I'm getting the, out of the case if y'all actually want to see the dollar sign again. Yes, we do, Cameron. Cameron Smith, everyone. Oh, yeah, yeah. I had to uh, make myself pretty because I realized that Pat Brown's watching us on like an IMAX screen. So, you know. <laughs> Cameron, you kill me, dude. <laughs> nice. Uh, let's go in here. Let's see. I might have to get it out of the bag. Yeah, give me a minute. Yeah, so uh, your card, that's a Hupe card, right? Yes, I thought it was Greg, but uh, Michael told me that it's... Uh, yeah, it's Greg. Adam. Yeah, I reached out to Adam. He's, he's, uh, he's moved them all already. Okay. And I mean, I got this one directly from uh, Steve Arnold, so I don't know who all it's been, who all's had it before me. Yeah, I'll hold one down. I got to find one to, and uh, figure out what, uh, what? what pricing should be on it, too. Let's see. There we go. There you go. Uh, uh, there it is. Yep. It's not like he ever used that one. God, that is crazy. So, you see, I mean, it's not much to it. Yeah. But yeah, I figure he probably put a mile or two on that one. Yeah. Well. God. Yeah, you lucked out with that one, buddy. Oh yeah, I jumped on it as soon as as soon as he started the sentence. I was already typing sold. <laughs> So. That's phenomenal. Well, we got to hook Mike uh, Mike Kelly up with one of those, man. Yeah. Um, I never want to have these uh, hangouts turn into sales, but I do want to show something that is available for purchase. Just because I don't, I I cannot physically collect any more than I do, um, and it fits into it with today's topic of ephemera. I have some pretty cool stamps. Um, I mean, from, I have packs of these things. Granada, these are all shuttle. Republic of Guinea, Equatorial New Guinea. And then I also have um, full sheets of stamps. So if you're looking at one, um, I have, and again, I, I bought these for myself, but I just physically can't collect any more. But I have full, full Russian. These are full Russian sheets. Cool. And I have quite a few. So if anyone, oh, here, if anyone's interested in stuff like this, I, I don't need to collect it anymore. It can go in your collection. Yeah. So I've got a, got a pretty good pile of it and they're all in really good shape. Um, so if anyone's interested in that kind of stuff, let me know. Uh, I'll send some stuff your way. Uh, I feel like no uh, topic on ephemera is complete without uh, at least touching on the uh, the NASA counters again. Oh, <laughs> absolutely, I definitely will. As you uh, look at Apollo pictures, Apollo return sample pictures, you'll notice these things in all the pictures. What you're looking at is 
the highest quality reproduction that my team and I were able to pull off. That team was Pat Brown, Travis Howard, and myself. So this is the actual six centimeter scale that NASA uses um, and EMSMET, uh, the, the uh, uh, Antarctic Search for Meteorites teams use. And uh, I'll probably get it incorrect, but the, they put the, the, the year, I don't know, Pat can, Pat can give us more detail exactly what it is. Of course, Pat left the building momentarily, but I think that they have the first two, the first two <laughs> digits of the, uh, oh, here he is. He's back. Um, Pat knows a lot more about this than I yeah, am. I'm back. He was our, <laughs> our historical engineer on this, whereas Travis was the physical engineer and I was just a beautiful man behind the mic. So I have one more yes, of these available, and I'm trying to make you well, I think spotlight. My internet's unstable right now. Oh, okay. But the way the Apollo people used them was first two digits were Apollo mission. Yeah, so the first two were the Apollo mission, and then they went to the number of the, the number of the rock and then the fragments. And every every one is dialable. And then even the gray scale on the butt on the dots are, are meant to, to calibrate your camera. So for instance, I think it's 18, 18 point gray or something, whatever the center one is. Something just happened. Yeah. The center one is like uh, you calibrate your, your camera to that and then you know the, the lighting is correct. So this is just something that you see in all these photos of um, NASA and um, Antarctic um, samples. But unless you go there, you can't get one. These are, these are uh. you know, unobtainium. So uh, we built 11 of them. And um, the team each got one. Uh, a lot of the people at the Meteorite Mansion sn um, snagged one um, at a discount. And then um, we put one in E.T.'s room, Edwin Thompson's room, and also one in, um, in uh, Mike Farmer's room. And uh, so Mike Farmer was so, he was he liked it so much he actually put it right next to his uh, new Pakistani fall the Zob. So he had the main mass that he was showing de debuting at the show and he had this right next to it. So um, one more available if you are interested and don't mind paying for something rare, hit me up. But I have, I have mine set to my first classification, one, two, five, seven, four, fragment number one, oh, fragment number one. So that's what I have mine set for. <laughs> and there's Cameron's. Nice. And then, you know, Pat has a few of them as well. So one's never enough for Pat. So. Well, does anyone have anything that they'd like to show off, meteorite related or ephemera? I got some ephemera. Go for Bruce. So you can see there, it's McDonnell Douglas Corporation. Mm -hmm. um, this is a study, the Advanced, space, Advanced Logistics Spacecraft Study, the ALSS program. That was what's beyond Apollo. Um, and I really haven't looked at, at this too much. Um, it's this sheet it was submitted to the government. I think I don't know if you can see here, it says, uh, United States government, mm -hmm. um, and it's dated 15 December 1967. It's really kind of interesting. Some of the plans charts they have. Let's find. So, oh man, technical yeah. schematics. Oh wow. Oh. They were trying thinking about you know Two, you've got the four, regular seven. capsule. Yeah, how how you can squeeze more in? It's like there was going to be. Seven cargo nine. section behind wow. the capsule, um, so you could have more 
astronauts in there. This is crazy. And I was flipping through it and it actually talked about spray on ablative material over a titanium skin. Mm. So I was looking because one pet had the, uh, the ablative plug. Mm. Um, so. Wow. That is crazy. I mean, like it, what it actually reminds me of is like, yeah, like the, the uh, auto manufacturers and their dream car or concept cars, you know, this is our concept spaceship. New from NASA 2025. <laughs> <laughs> it seats nine, eight comfortably. <laughs> 386,000 miles on. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I haven't really, I've been, I want to like get, you know, when I have time to look more into the history and find out what, you know, the contract and what the plans were, you know, I don't know if it was just they were doing one or if there were, you know, it was a competition and other manufacturers were, you know, yeah, was it, it was it a well. commissioned work? Like they they submitted on behalf of McDonnell Douglas to NASA for a bid request. Yeah, yeah, I, that's what I'm like wondering. Is like, is it, this is McDonnell Douglas version? Is there a North American? Is there a Grumman version? Is yeah. there you know, Boeing um, in there? You know, as well. This I got this from somebody that bought it in the state sale and had like no idea of what it was. Yeah. You know that's exactly. Cool. I mean, he knew it was you know something because you you can figure it out, but. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as, as soon as I saw oh, it, I sorry, was Bruce, my internet dropped out. Um, oh. Can you show me the cover of the uh, Pat, what, the 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 cover itself? Yeah. Flaking out again. Wow. Oh well, unfortunate. We'll have to uh, we'll have to send some pictures to to Pat after this. But yeah, well, I was going to ask you, Bruce, if you wouldn't mind as you go through, like maybe throw a picture in my way or something. I'll put it in the thumbnail for the video. Well, I definitely don't want to leave anyone out. Oh, I'll go for it. Wow. Oh, yeah. Well, that's the extended yeah, cargo. This... Oh, yeah. This, this. This was a bid that um, that they did for um, to use uh, Gemini-like hardware for uh, what got called the Apollo missions. That's so, because there was also I, it also came with a little model of Gemini and a little that and that didn't look like a regular you know off-the-shelf model. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Those are the, those those are associated with the bids, uh, the you know the competitive bids, uh, and then there was one for each executive and so forth. But I wonder those how many copies extreme. there were. There can't be many copies of uh, th th those models. No, there there weren't. You know, it was in the uh, ten ish. Also, yeah, it's pretty interesting reading. You know, it's handwritten yeah. and you know it's so well so well written you know you wouldn't be able to read mine yeah you know a lot of that stuff got got tossed back in the day you know i was in aerospace for 25 years and you know that that stuff just had no value once the project was over unless you kept records for archival purposes oh. they just got tossed i you know it's one of those things that if, if you'd only known then what you know now yeah. You no, know, I, I got all kinds of things like that because I, I worked on missiles and space parts and all kinds of stuff. I didn't keep anything. It just wasn't worth anything. Yeah. So here's something on uh, the ablative heat shield and some, it says new data. And uh, yeah, yeah. data uh, book, sure. calculations. Uh, that's a typical uh, development notebook. Th that, that, that is an important document. Uh, you should contact somebody in the space collectibles or um, maybe even the Air and Space Museum to see if that should be uh, uh, scanned and preserved. The archives? Yeah. Oh, this is like Antique Roadshow here. Yeah. <laughs> if, if only. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He spent 50 cents at a garage sale today. <laughs> Two dollars and five cents. 
Um, I definitely don't want to leave anyone hanging if they wanted to show something off. So last call to show things off. I haven't shared my screen. I have one more thing I want to show off before we say goodbye for the night. Um, and it's something I'm proud of. Let me see if it works. Um, share with computer sound. Share. All right. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Okay. I want to show you something that I'm super, super pumped. Imagine you're, you just clicked on a YouTube video, and here's what you see. All right. Here we go. It's David. Uh, did you guys see that or not? Heard sound. Yeah. Didn't see anything. Okay, I will fix that. Stop share. Share screen one. All right. And then, whoop. Let me see here. Okay. So here we go. Nice graphic. That's cool. Who, who did that for yeah, you? Yeah, that is cool. Yes. Now, I don't know if I will lose you or not, but I want to do one more. And it is... I just got these an hour before the thing started, so hold on. Oh, Space and Earth. Cool. cool one too. Who, who did that for you? Um, yeah, but last last call out, Meteorite Mafia. Thank you very much, John Higgins, Outer Space Rocks. I uh, welcome everyone to take their places off of mute. I thank you very much for joining us today. It was another lively hangout, and guess what? It's recording. <laughs> <laughs> so we're actually going to be able to share this with people. Uh, cool. with, with everyone's help and everyone's weekly cooperation, I started my YouTube channel June 2nd, my birthday. Every day, worldwide, every single day, almost 12 hours of Topher Spin Meteorites media is consumed globally. Nice. I think that is super impressive. And the quality and information that we're showing off is is second to none and we're only going to go up from there so i really appreciate everyone's weekly cooperation and partnership because we are getting useful knowledge about our hobby and our passion out to people who are tuning in because they like what they're hearing so Topher, thank you everyone Topher, can i ask you to edit Thanks. out my ineptness with my uh Media I, video. I will work on that, but I'm not sure. There's a lot of work that goes into these things. But <laughs> okay. thanks everyone for your for your attendance and cooperation. Definitely appreciate it. Have a good week. Okay. Good night. Good night, everybody. Bye. Good evening. Good night. Bye, Marissa. Good night. Bye, Marissa.